everyone. I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com. Today, I'm going to talk to you about two different types of soap making, hot process soap making and cold process soap making. We're going to go over how to do both of them, what some of their benefits and what some of their drawbacks might be. Both of these make wonderful skin loving soap and hopefully this video will help make it clear which process is for you. Here on my table, we have our building blocks for both of these types of soap. We have our oils. This is just the Brambleberry Basic Quick Mix, which I'm using the Lots of Lather. It's a mixture of hard and soft oils, sodium hydroxide, and then we'll use water as well. Cold process soap and hot process soap both use these basic building blocks to make great bars of soap. The difference between cold process soap and hot process soap is just the application of heat. First, let's go ahead and take a look at cold process soap. So once I've suited up for safety, then it's time to mix my oils and my lye water. In this case, I'm using water as a carrier for my lye, and then I'm using an immersion blender, also known as a stick blender, to mix everything together well. Once we hit something that looks kind of like a melted milkshake, you'll notice that it's a very nice, light, creamy texture. This is called thin trace, and you can get it all the way up to medium trace or even thick trace. Trace is the term that's used to refer to how thick this batter is. Once you've hit trace, then it's time to add your fragrance and your color. You can hand whisk these in, typically the preferred method. So at this point, this is a really gorgeous texture. It's a beautiful creamy texture and it looks fantastic. And you can see how easily it pours into the mold. From here, we're gonna let this sit in the mold for about one to three days before pulling it out of the mold, cutting it, and then letting it sit for four to six weeks before we use it or give it away to ensure that it's fully hardened, all the water has evaporated out, and it's at its most mild. Now it's time to try some hot process soap. So the only difference here is you'll notice that I'm mixing this together inside of a crock pot. Now, if you don't have a crock pot, you can make a double boiler. I just like to use a crock pot because it is safer than say leaving this mixture on a stove. Whatever happens, when you're doing hot process soap, you don't wanna leave your soap unattended. So at this point, I'm going to let this sit on the heat. I'm gonna let this cook. The cooking speeds the saponification process. This is also the time period where you wanna make sure that your crock pot is never more than half full. Ideally, you wanna have at least half of that headspace in the crock pot left, just in case the application of heat makes the soap foam up or grow. So after about 10 minutes, you'll notice that the soap has turned into kind of a translucent jelly mixture. This is exactly where you want it to be. And you can continue to let it cook down from here or give it a good stir. With the application of heat, you'll notice that this soap starts to become gloppy. Some people start to see little tiny phases called the champagne bubble phase where everything sort of starts to boil up. When this starts to happen, you know you really want to be stirring and keep that heat from really sitting inside the soap. You wanna keep stirring and stirring and stirring, otherwise the entire batch can boil out. So this is where the saponification reaction really starts to go. This is basically gel phase and we're forcing gel phase. And also because of the application of heat, this is where we really want to keep an eye out on that soap. The application of heat can make the soap start crawling out of the pot. If that starts to happen, stay calm, turn down the heat, keep stirring, make sure your safety equipment is on. Now this is looking great. We are still gonna give it a stir to help evenly distribute. Right now the pH should be coming down pretty dramatically. And now is when we get to add our fragrance and our color. And because of this really thick texture and the soap is ready to go basically right now, you do have to work really quickly to stir the fragrance and color in and get it into your mold in a timely manner. Now you've seen cold process soap and hot process soap. And I hope you notice that the difference in textures are very, very different types of soap batter. They still make great soap, both of them. They still have the same basic ingredients, but they look very different in the final product. So cold process soap, since we pour at such a nice kind of milkshakey liquid uh, trace, you have a lot more colorant options and a lot more design options. You can get swirls and you can get layers in, you can do rainbows, you can do all kinds of things. Hot process soap, because of its naturally thicker texture, allows for a little bit of color design options, but nothing near the complexity or the intricacy of cold process soap. Hot process soap definitely has a rustic look, but it's a personal preference. I think it looks fantastic, especially when mixed with botanicals. 
And if it's not your cup of tea, that's okay. The pros of using hot process soap for your main soap making method may change your mind. The magic of hot process soap is that once it's plopped into the mold, it is ready to cut, use, sell, give away right away. This is because we sped up saponification with the application of heat. This evaporated out extra water also made the soap exceptionally mild and ready to use right away. The soap will continue to harden up over a one to three week period as the rest of the water evaporates out, but it is ready to use the next day right after you've made it. The ability to use your soap, sell your soap right away in just one day, that's huge for a lot of small business owners, especially if you've had a particularly busy or successful craft show the week before and you need to replenish your wares. I hope this helped to clear up some of the differences between cold process soap and hot process soap. There are pros and cons to both. Do you have a favorite? I'd love to hear which one and why. Leave us a comment below. I'm gonna be sure to read them all. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you're told every single time we come out with a brand new video. And when you post your stuff on social media, we'd love to see it. Hashtag it Bramble On. We get really inspired by what you make and I know other makers do too. Until next time, happy soaping.